freeze Antarctica up in here. Thank you, Mr. Woodruff. I meant, um, Mr. Warden. You're welcome. Wow. Oh, that's George. call this meeting of Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who's out in the uh, here in the auditorium tonight uh, to our, our meeting and also those folks that are watching the uh, meeting broadcast on G10 television. To begin with tonight I'm going to ask everyone to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance led by Council Member Randy Thomas followed by the invocation by our City Attorney Mr. John Carter. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this most beautiful day and for all the blessings that you so graciously bestow upon us individually and upon our city of Jacksonville. We give thanks for all of our city employees and for the service they render each day to our citizens. And especially tonight, we give thanks for those who will be recognized and for their life-saving efforts. We pray for our military members who are serving us here and around the world, for their safety, for their anxious families. And as always, we ask your guidance and your direction to be with our mayor and with our council. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Please be seated. Members of council, you have uh, should have in front of you a, a copy of the uh, agenda for the tonight's meeting, along with the consent items. And at this time, I would entertain a motion to adopt. So moved. 
Mr. Bitter. For the adoption of the agenda and the consent items. Second. And a second from Mr. Lazaro. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Next, we have minutes for approval. We have a July 16, 2013 special workshop meeting and also a July 16, 2016 regular meeting. Mayor Phillips, I move that we approve the July 16, 2013 special workshop meeting minutes and the July 16, 2013 regular meeting minutes as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Minutes have been approved. This opportunity now to uh, recognize some of our public safety uh, folks on a job well done. Uh, I'm going to ask Officer Brian Stitz, Officer Jason Miller, Driver Operator Dwayne Messner, Driver Operator Lawrence Abelos, Firefighter Raymond Sorrell, Telecommunicator Sarah Anderson. Telecommunicator Hannah Floyd. And telecommunicator, oh, this must be a new one, Julie Robson. <laughs> Just missed. <clears throat> On June 21st, 2013, Jacksonville Police and Fire Units were dispatched to the area of Gum Branch Road near Maynard Boulevard in reference to a woman in medical distress. Upon arrival, Officers Brian Stitz and Jason Miller found the victim to be unresponsive. The officers began CPR and applied the AED, attempting to regain the victim's pulse. When driver operators Lawrence Abelos and Dwayne Messner and firefighter Raymond Sorrell arrived, they assumed care, taking over CPR and establishing an airway. EMS arrived and the patient was transported to Oslo Memorial Hospital with firefighter Sorrell traveling, traveling with the EMS unit to continue rescue breathing. The victim was subsequently transferred to Vidant Hospital. <clears throat> EMS Battalion Chief Jeff Matthews, who was present at the scene, stated that the teamwork between the departments was the best that he has ever witnessed. Telecommunicators Sarah Anderson, Hannah Floyd, and Julie Robson worked together to dispatch fire, police, and EMS to the scene quickly. Their quick and efficient relay of information to the units was a very important and integral aspect of the su successful outcome of this whole situation. The immediate response and life-sustaining efforts by these eight public safety employees resulted in preventing a tragedy. In recognizing their efforts, I'm very honored tonight to present them with the Life Saving Award. And I want to thank all of you for your commitment to public safety in Jacksonville. And, uh, and I know each and every one of you, and you are nothing but professional. And that's what, that's what, that's what makes us so special here in Jacksonville, to have people like you. Thank you very much. for a minute. I forgot you were there at the first end of it. Um, if you all will help me out here. This goes to Mr. Officer Stitz. This goes to Lawrence Avalos. This goes to Firefighter Messner. I mean, Operator Messner. Firefighter Sorrell. And Chief, I'm going to let you give this to Officer Miller. 
This is uh, Miss Anderson. Miss Floyd. And your new dispatcher, Miss Rock. <laughs> Thank you again very much. That's just, you know, this is why we're so proud of our public safety people here in Jacksonville. You know, having come from, you know, from you guys, you know, to the position I'm in now, I, I still feel like I'm part of you, and I'm just proud every time y'all do something so special like this. Chief, you want to say something? I'll be glad to. You know, in, in 33 years, I, I've been a, a police officer. Actually, longer than that in public safety. I started as a EMT when I was 15 years old. And uh, th this last year, we've been here 10 times for, uh, for our public safety people saving people's lives. And, and this is just an excellent example. In my 33 years, I have never seen it before where the dedication of, that, of such personnel have made such a difference in this community. And from the telecommunicators to the police officers to the firefighters, making sure that they get the units there quickly and efficiently and effectively and working together as a team really makes me proud to be the di director of public safety. Thank you for what you do for our community. It's, uh, it, it is, it's truly an honor for me to be, uh, to be your director. <clears throat> Chief Aliyah. I'll let you say something here too. <laughs> I just uh, I, I uh, just kind of reiterate what Chief Yannard already said. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to work with these fine folks. Uh, they all do a fantastic job. And they're all here to serve their community, um, and I'm just grateful to have the opportunity to serve with them. Anybody who would like to step in from the audience, feel free to. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, wait a second. We still have to form two lines. Let's have you each of you first. And you three let us come here. Is that good for you? You need it better? Wait a second. You've got to look at this way. The camera is this way. One more. I want to thank all your, all your uh, co-workers, your brothers and sisters back there who showed up in your support tonight. Y'all are pretty good about that. Always have been. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to take a really quick break here. And let, I know some of you want to leave because, you know, I'm sure the business part of this meeting is not of any interest to you. Uh, and you feel free to leave if you want to. But if you want to stay, by all means, stay. <laughs> well, I, I have no takers.
All right, Council, that brings us to agenda item number one uh, in, your pa uh, in your packet. This is a public hearing and voluntary annexation petition for Jacksonville Marketplace. It's a 5.57 acre tract on Western Boulevard. And Mr. Ron Massey, our assistant city manager, will be presenting this item. Mayor and Council, <clears throat> this voluntary annexation position, uh, petition was received from <clears throat> Columbia Development on behalf of Kenneth Witcher, Kenneth Witcher for a 5.57 acre tract that is contiguous to the current city limit boundaries. The tract is located at the corner of Gateway North and Western Boulevard adjacent to Marine Chevrolet. Current plans for the parcel include subdividing it into four parcels for up to six businesses. The, the development is uh, currently named Jacksonville Mar uh, Marketplace and is for commercial, retail, and restaurant use. The financial analysis shows a negative net cash flow over the five-year review period of, of $56,000. Uh, staff <clears throat> recommends the council adopt the annexation ordinance as presented. Council, do you have any questions of Mr. Massey? The map, uh, in terms of the color code, the area to the north of Gateway Drive, that's not part of the annexation area. Is that correct? It, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions of Mr. Massey? Okay, thank you, Ron. This time I'm going to recess the regular city council meeting to open a public hearing in this matter. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak to this matter? If so, please indicate by raising your hand. Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing and reconvene the regular city council meeting. Council, you're being asked to consider the annexation ordinance. I would move that the council adopt the annexation ordinance as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item number two is a public hearing on a voluntary annexation petition for Fraser Park Section 2. It's a 22.02 acre uh, tract off of Williamsburg Parkway on Western Boulevard. Uh, Mr. Massey will be presenting this item also. Mr. Massey. Mayor and Council, the voluntary annexation petition was received from John Pearson Associates on behalf of John Koenig for a 22.02 acre tract that is contiguous to the current city limit boundaries. The tract is a continuation of Williamsburg development off of Western. Uh, this uh, tract is uh, called Fraser Park Section 2. Uh, the uh, preliminary and general plan showing 42 single-family residential lots was approved in April 2013. The total project size is 26.97 acres. However, a portion of the development site is already located within the city limits. Therefore, uh, this annexation request is only for the 22 acres remaining. Unfortunately, the cost and revenue figures uh, have not been received by the developer, so we have not been able to do the detailed cost analysis at, at this time. As a result of this, staff recommends that the, uh, the council conduct the public hearing, however, recess the, the public hearing until October 8th, uh, which time we anticipate having the necessary information to be able to complete the uh, revenue analysis. Additionally, this is in compliance with the request of the petitioner to continue to the 8th. They're doing some, checking some numbers, if you will. Does anyone have any questions of Mr. Massey at this time? Okay, thank you. Well, this time I'm going to recess the regular city council meeting and open the public hearing in this matter. And at this time I'll ask if there's anyone present that wishes to speak on this matter, please indicate by raising your hand. I don't see anyone at this time, but I am going to recess the public hearing until the uh, October 8th meeting, and uh, we'll uh, take it up at that time. <clears throat> We're going to uh, now go through our first section of public comment for the evening. 
I do not have anyone having signed up, but uh, if anyone came in after the sheet was taken up that wishes to speak, please indicate by raising your hand. Okay, I don't see anyone, so we're going to go on all the way over to agenda item number nine. And this is a bid award for fire station number two. Uh, and Wally Hansen, our interim public services director, will be uh, presenting this item. Mr. Massey, do you have the clicker? Okay. Apologize. Good evening, <laughs> Mayor, Council. Tonight, the item before you is for the bid of award for fire station number two. The um, this project was originally bid back in November of 2002, I mean 2012. The project is for a 10,000 square foot fire station to be located at the corner of Gum Branch Road and Sandy Drive. It will replace the existing fire station in Northwoods on Barn Street. Um, the existing station is poorly located and, and undersized based on the current service area. Bids originally received were over budget. Um, the low bidder came in uh, the first round of bids at approximately $2.9 million. Staff and the architect, upon receiving the bids, um, reevaluated the scope of the project and um, looked for ways to reduce the scope and save costs. In addition, the city also contracted with an independent construction management consultant to review the drawings and specifications and to provide a menu of items that could possibly um, be cut and cost estimates for those cuts. Uh, those items were then presented to council at your April workshop for consideration and the items on your screen um, are basically what council approved to eliminate from the project. Those included reducing the roof height over the apparatus bay and at the me mezzanine where the apparatus bay met the main portion of the building um, to lower the masonry at the, uh, around the apparatus bay at the bay doors to emit the rolled lintel or the arched bay openings, which also allowed us to reduce the door height and to change from a standing seam metal roof to a fiberglass shingle roof system. Essentially, this is the uh, elevation that was selected based on those uh, selections or, or modifications in the scope of work. So you can see the, the roof height was lowered slightly. Um, the square bay doors versus, thank you, an oval uh, or an arched opening and then right behind the um, where the tower is instead of the roof coming all the way across that actually dropped down and allowed us to save some money. Um, based on those modifications staff and the architect made the necessary changes and we rebid re the project. The base bid included a complete building with parking areas and stormwater ponds and it also included three ad alternates. The ad alternates were a hurricane protection system, which is essentially a system that goes over all of the openings in the building, all the windows and doors, um, also including the apparatus bay doors. Yes, it is. The epoxy floor in the apparatus bay um, is basically a coating, and then a landscape buffer, which is a required element along the south property line with the um, Cardinal Village Apartments. And it's a, important to note that that's a required element. However, we bid it as an ad alternate to see where that price came in at, which gives us a couple of options. One is to bid it completely separate from the project or possibly to have staff purchase and install the buffer. We realized that the um, bid tab was inadvertently omitted from your agenda item, so I believe you have one before you tonight, but we received seven bids. They ranged from just below um, $2.3 million to just over $2.5 million. 
So we received a, a good bid pool. Um, the Lowest bid was provided by Resolute Building Company out of Chapel Hill, North Carolina, at a base bid of $2,286,300. Um, and you can see from each of the alternates, they provided $36,800 for the hurricane protection system, an epoxy coating, coating on the apparatus bay, door, uh, bay floor at $24,300, and then the landscape buffer along the south um, Property line with Cardinal Village came in about 23,900 on the low bidder. Um, that does not, the, the required landscaping for the building per the zoning ordinance is included in the project. It's just the buffer that was taken out separately. On that matter, the uh, landscaping, we are going to look very closely at whether the city crews can install it. What we would uh, ask you to do is if you're comfortable awarding the low bid, we will bring back to you as we determine some final negotiations uh, whether we will in fact install the hurricane screening at this time. One of the nice things about that product is you can install it at any time. That's correct. The second alternative, which is the epoxy floor, uh, we are asking that, again, you let the staff do some additional testing before we actually award that, al that alternate, because obviously the epoxy floor is not going to be one of the first things they install. Uh, every one of our fire stations has problems with whatever flooring we put in, so we have a bid. Uh, we're just asking you not to award that particular part at this time until we do a little bit more research, and then on the same thing with the landscaping. So I believe, while I am correct, our request is to award the base bid, to not award, but also not deny the bids for alternative one, two, and three going to the same company. That's correct. It's perfect lead-in for this slide. Okay. The, uh, we did a financial analysis of the project. Uh, basically, the estimated cost that we'll need for, at this time is $2,466,000. Um, what that includes is the base bid. It does not include the alternates at this time. Um, it does include just under a 5% contingency for the project, and it includes special inspections and materials testing that are required of the owner per the building code. Um, we have current project funds available and set aside for this project of $2,426,000. So we need a transfer of $40,000 from capital reserve to move forward with the project. And this would be part of any motion that... Yes, made. sir. Yes, One sir. other thing we would like to, to add is uh, at a point in next year's budget, we are going to have to address the issues of furnishings. Our goal here is to get the building built. We have to build it within the revenues that we have currently set aside. I can tell you currently we do not have uh, in this bid, nor would it have been in this bid, how we're going to furnish it, including things like the washers and dryers and refrigerators and bunks and so forth. So at a future date, we will be bringing to you really as part of next year's budget. And that's one of the nice things is it's already August. By the time this, this construction is over, we'll be in the new fiscal year or close to it. So those items will be forthcoming. I see that you did uh, contact Wrightsville Beach regarding work done by this Resolute We did. We contacted the references on Resolute Building Company, right. and they had good references, and they had actually just completed, I believe in 2010, a fire station for Wrightsville Beach, Absolutely. and they were very happy. Okay. So staff's recommendation tonight is to approve the CIP and budget amendments that are attached and to award the base bid to Resolute Building Company. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, Council, any questions of Mr. Hanson? Yeah, Mayor, the uh, $36,800 for the hurricane protection system, is that just sheeting? No, sir. Um, actually, it's a system, as Chief Spencer put it, it looks like trampoline material. It has hardware mounted above all of the windows and all of the doors, and then on the ground, um, and it rolls up and rolls out when, when it's not being used, it rolls up, and then when it, it needs to be in place, they'll 
put it in place just before the storm hits. And essentially it attaches to hardware that's already on the building. And if I remember the um, marketing person, it cut a hundred mile, mile an hour wind down to less than five or something like that. But again, so, we're, we're at this point, we're still doing some research on that. So we're not asking you to award that alternate. And the, the company that we did investigate installing the hardware now and just purchasing the, the actual barrier at a later date. And the manufacturer actually told us that it would be better to just wait. If we did not want to purchase it now, we could purchase it at a later date because it, it could easily be installed um, after the building's constructed. So assuming no problems with construction, we've got 5%, roughly $100,000 set aside for equipment or whatever? Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions of Mr. Hanson? Okay. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. All right, Council, uh, as Mr. Hanson uh, said, they were asking you to consider the budget and CIP uh, amendments and award this contract to Resolute Building Company of Chapel Hill. Mayor Phillips, I move that we approve the budget and CIP amendments and award the construction contract to Resolute Building Company in the amount of $2,286,300. In addition to that, a 5% contingency and a $40,000 transfer from the Capital Reserve. Second. A motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? <laughs> that was unanimous. Yes. Okay. Um, no, agenda item number 10, this is appointments to the Jacksonville Oslo Sports Commission and uh, the bylaws of the Sports Commission created by the City of, of Jacksonville calling the City Council to appoint one half the members, uh, membership of the Board of Directors from recommendations made by the Board of Directors. The board has adopted bylaws that create staggered three-year terms and a three-year term limit for membership. Um, we're looking at... Uh, does Glenn want to speak about this? Uh, Mayor Phillips, I'll be glad to if you... Okay, please. <laughs> Uh, we have two nominations, Mayor and uh, uh, Davidson Myers, who is a local attorney with uh, John Drew Warlick, and Michael Tootin to serve on, on seat I and seat J um, as presented, and uh, uh, we hope that you would consider their, their nomination. Right. Councilor, are there any other nominations? Can I get a motion? Mr. Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll make a motion that we appoint the persons as recommended by the Jacksonville Islands Sports Commission Board of Directors. Okay. And uh, FYI, I know both of these gentlemen have worked with them uh, over a period of time and, and great individuals and, and will be a, a significant contributors to the, to the Sports Commission. Move the nominations be closed and the candidates elected by acclamation. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right, that's going to take us to agenda item number 11. This is a Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee appointment. Uh, this is a, we have a nine members are authorized serving staggered three-year terms. We have one vacant position and three qualified applicants interested in serving. Uh, at this time, I will uh, turn to Council Member Jerome Willingham, who is the liaison, Council liaison to the Recreation and Parks Commission, or Advisory Committee, excuse me, uh, for any nominations. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I nominate Jeffrey Kane. All right, are there any other nominations? Move the nominations be closed and the candidate elected by acclamation. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> all right, that's all the numbered agenda items. Uh, that brings us to our last section of public comment. I don't think the demographics of the room have changed any since the last uh, announcement, but in the event, I will ask anyone who wishes to speak uh, who didn't sign up, feel free to raise your hand. All right, that will bring us to our reports, and I'm going to start with Mr. Warden tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just wanted to 
thank all those who worked and, and put on the National Night Out last night. I thought it was a, a, a great event. Uh, I was really happy that the community supported the great event, all the work that, that went into bringing the vendors and, and, and just all the logistics involved. And the, uh, the community came out, and judging by the number of people and how late they stayed, I think everyone had a good time. So my compliments to the staff of, of the city and those involved in putting the, that national night out. Good, good job. So uh, number two, um, just recently, we had a, a tragedy in, in Pennsylvania where uh, an individual who uh, mentally unbalanced uh, broke into or participated in a commission meeting and proceeded to shoot some folks. And I just wanted to thank Chief uh, for you for having your folks here tonight. Uh, I think it's very important. I'm not really worried about me, but I'm worried about some of those guys down there. So. <laughs> but anyway, thank you. Uh, no report. Thank you. No report. No report. Mr. Willingham? I'd like to thank the city and everybody who um, um, came out to honor the dedication marker for my mother um, in the African American Heritage Trail. I really appreciate that. It meant a lot to my family and me. When we, uh, when the city recognized the Voting Rights Task Force, Ernie um, mentioned the law firm of <clears throat> Paul Weiss, Wharton, and Garrison as being the representative law firm for the Voting Rights Task Force. Uh, there was a, another law firm that um, and um, Mr. Carter is nodding his head. There was another law firm <clears throat> involved in that um, case, and that was Julius Chambers' law firm. And Julius Chambers passed last Friday. Uh, Julius Chambers is mentioned in the same breath as Thurgood Marshall when they talk about prominent civil rights attorneys, uh, former Supreme, uh, Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall. Um, he had the courage and the commitment to uh, fairness and equal opportunity and civil rights that um, withstood uh, the jeopardy that <clears throat> his life was in as well as his family because his uh, uh, home was firebombed in, I believe, 1967 and his office burned to the ground in 1971. He was a scholar. I think he was first in his class at Carolina he, uh, Law School. Um, editor of the Law Journal, and um, he actually had the first integrated law firm in the state of North Carolina. So um, just a little uh, tribute and sharing of, the, of that history for one of the civil rights giants, uh, Mr. Julius Chambers. Mm -hmm. Nothing further. Thank you. <coughs> Councilmember Bittner. I want to echo Mr. Warden's comments about National Night Out. Uh, it was a great evening probably the largest crowd that I think I've ever seen, much larger than we've seen when it was held out here on New Bridge Street. And I think that proves a point in our workshop is the investments we made in the downtown area. Uh, we were able to attract a, probably a record number of vendors, larger crowd, the National Night Out, all because of the pres presence of Riverwalk Park and the surrounding amenities that have been put in place in that downtown area. We're making progress. It proved to be a great evening, and it just continues to justify the kind of economic return we can get from downtown if we continue to make the proper investments. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, could I add one more thing? Yes, sir. Please do. Um, there are a lot of very good attorneys that never take a case to the U.S. Supreme Court, and there are a lot of excellent attorneys who uh, never win the one that they do take. Julius Chambers took eight cases to the United States Supreme Court and won every one of them. So it's a remarkable pretty good, man. Pretty good batting record there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tim Lazar. Thank you, Mayor. I, too, would like to thank the staff uh, for, <coughs> for an excellent job last night. Um, everybody was working hard. The people were enjoying themselves. Um, just an amazing event. 
exactly what I envision us doing is creating that atmosphere for people to come out with their families and just enjoy themselves uh, without any expense. Um, in particular, I would like to thank Richard and your wife uh, for cooking for all the volunteers. Uh, to me, it says a lot about your commitment to your team. And um, it's just amazing how fortunate we really are to have the sort of team here at City Hall that we have. And, and it's not just a job for the folks, at least, that I come in contact with. They really care about who they are, what they're doing, the people that they're serving, and the management team is just as strong. And yesterday was a testimony to a testament to, to your commitment to them. And, and so I want to personally thank you for that. Thank I you. just want to say that with Richard's cooking, I noticed that one vendor made a landslide selling bicarbonate. <laughs> <laughs> and the that's all, man. Emergency room attendance was <laughs> up a little last night. Now well, that's that's one thing I can say about about Dr. Woodruff. There, he doesn't mind getting his hands dirty. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he likes to jump in and do things. So, I, I I like to echo those same sentiments. I had the opportunity to go out there last <clears> night, <throat> even though I'm a little bit. I don't know, winged, I guess is the best word to put it. I mean, I, I, I still at a point in the recovery process where I don't like to get jostled about it too much, but I did like to get out there amongst some of the folks last night and, and, and see some. And when I couldn't be there any longer, my likeness was there, even though it did lack a, a sufficient amount of suntan that I normally carry, you know, from all the golf that I play on the weekends and stuff. But, uh, uh, it was a good time, and I do want to thank the police and fire department and all our all our city employees for all that you did to put that on. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say one other thing here too. Uh, you know, the first time we did this is when I was a deputy police chief over at the police department, and this was an idea that we spawned back in 1998. And I know Mr. Bittner is a little too modest, but I want to uh, thank him for his efforts because he's the one that uh, uh, really allowed us to start this whole thing 15 years ago when he was city manager. And uh, it's just been one of those uh, events that has grown and grown and grown and grown. And it's, it is the premier event in Jacksonville now. But anyway, with that said, I will ask you, Mr. Dr. Witter, for your report. We'd like to begin tonight with a short video that shows the public who were not able to attend the National Night Out. So if you would, please. I'd like to thank the media folks for putting that together so quickly today. Uh, two other quick matters. One, this coming Friday at 10 o'clock, that's August the 9th, we'll be holding a dedication ceremony for the Buddy Phillips Bridge. We invite the community to come out. The actual gathering will be down at the boat ramp directly across the street or across the street from the USO. Uh, we'll have a little ceremony. We'll have state officials and district officials here as well as we've invited the county commission and also obviously the city council. We'd invite the public to come and join with that. At the conclusion of the ceremony, we will have the official crossing of the bridge by the elected officials. Uh, we will have various uh, uh, vehicles donated by various uh, automobile uh, vendors here in town. Unfortunately, you won't be able to keep the car you ride in, but you will enjoy the ride across the bridge. I would also like to personally thank Robert Voss and his folks here in town with the DOT for helping to work through a very difficult project due to a lot of issues, including bankruptcy of the contractor. 
and overall it is something that the community is going to greatly benefit from. I would remind the council and the public that that was a public-public partnership. What does that mean? While the DOT provided the majority of the funds for the construction, the city council did stand in with roughly $350,000. And the chapel rail, Texas chapel rail that you see there, that has the various openings in it that make it look historic and older, that was funded by the city of Jacksonville. The lights that are on there was funded by the city of Jacksonville. So through the efforts of the council, that bridge has a different architectural flavor than it otherwise would have had. We would also like to remind council that on August the 20th, our workshop will actually begin at Fire Station 3. We have some ceremonies over there. We have built a new kitchen and we have upgraded the facilities. We would like for you to tour it. Uh, the word is that they may be serving some firehouse chili, but they're going to serve it on top of spaghetti chief spaghetti so you may want to bring your appetite and your antacids bottle of, it, bottle of imodium that's right okay uh, lastly as always mayor we thank you and the council for the leadership that y'all are providing it's a privilege to work in this community thank you dr woodruff mr carter no report mayor thank you okay council i would uh, entertain a motion at this time to go into closed session uh, for the purpose of discussing personnel uh, matters uh, pursuant to general statute 143-318.11, subsection A6. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye.